Welcome back to another edition of Athletic Director University. I'm Daniel Parker with Parker Executive Search, and I'm pleased to be joined by uh, two outstanding commissioners here, Amy Huckhausen with the America East Conference and our newest commissioner in the country. Congratulations, Thank Gloria Navarez uh, with the West Coast Conference. And uh, congrats on uh, just finishing MIT grad school. You two haven't Thank been you. busy no. at all. Nothing going on recently, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> moves and finishing school. So we have a few questions today. Love to get into the topic of leadership inspiration and uh, conference leadership. So uh, Amy, I'm gonna ask the uh, first question. There's so many pressing issues uh, or items in college athletics right now. How often do you discuss long-term strategy with all your different constituencies? I mean, with our presence in athletics directors where I spend the most time on long-term issues, we um, you know, certainly have some conference priorities that <clears throat> have both short and long-term impacts and plans associated with them. Uh, but then we also take time to talk about national issues, even if they might not directly or immediately impact our league. And certainly there's a whole host of issues that are in the college athletic space, and some of them will have a direct impact on us. Some of them have more of a trickle-down impact, but we still talk about them because I think it's important that folks in our league and at our level have an understanding of what's going on nationally, even yep. if they don't necessarily feel it every single day. And then something we started to do um, in the last year was at the end of every athletics director agenda, and we did it at our president's meeting as well, um, this year was what I call like an ideation session. Yeah. So it's always the last thing on our agenda before we close is we just open the floor, it's like open mic, and say what are, the, what are the questions that you all are facing or have or issues, and some of that relate to the conference, but then some of them are yeah. campus issues, and it's really great to observe them dialogue amongst each other and learn yeah. from each other, and I think that kind of discussion is really important. And as part of our long-term strategy as a league is that's maintaining a collegiality, a, a culture of collaboration, and I think those little things and taking time to do that um, are really important, and that's something that's important to our, our league's long-term strategy. Has there been some good ideas that have come out of those conversations there? Yeah, I, there I really have been. There yeah. really have been. You know, I'm, I have an interest in, you know, partly because of the MBA stuff, partly because I have just an interest in tech and digital and what's, what's new. Um, so I explore some things and probably too curious for my own good sometimes, but some of the startup companies that are out there, I'll take more calls than maybe um, some of my colleagues <clears throat> won't take. Um, and so I'll, I'll filter some of those ideas or initiatives to our ADs to see if there's yeah. interest there, and then maybe we can provide some services to them that way. But then also, like at our past meeting, um, this just this past June, there was a good conversation among our ADs just about the coach player relationship and parents and understanding the dynamics in that area because yeah. it's ever it's evergreen mm -hmm. and there's so many obvious examples where we have to have a, a greater um, heightened awareness towards that and while I don't have to deal with parents every day they absolutely do and so it was really good to just observe them dialogue on those issues great Gloria yeah. you had your first president's meeting in June Tell, yes. tell us a little bit about that. I can tell Being you about my new commissioner. <laughs> I can tell you about my second meeting. It's going to have an ideation yeah, session. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. Yeah, it's a great right. idea. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, it was it was really good. I had only been on the job two months, so a lot of it was, you know, as you referenced long term planning. I think my membership wanted to hear from me a long term vision as yeah. well as a short term. Um, plans and what the priorities were so we spent a lot of time beforehand preparing you know what those would look like and how we would present them to the different tiers of our membership yeah. Good. so Amy the, the second question here is every every group has its internal influencers how do you balance the wishes of those who may be a bit more influential with those whose opinion may differ but still matter with the overall group dynamic uh, it, you know, it takes a little bit more time, and yeah, every group has those that are both most, most vocal, and most vocal doesn't always mean most influential, but balancing all of those dynamics is really important. So I, so I think where I spend most of my time is um, managing the relationships, and so if you do have the more influential group, uh, particularly if it's something that I also support, I also think it's really important to always see the other side. Um, so whether that's um, a set of athletic directors, presidents, or whatever group that has a differing opinion, um, always making sure that that's inserted somehow in our conversation, whether I bring that up or if a, if a fellow athletic director is uncomfortable doing that, you know, we, we sort of manage that, but it's, 
one of the things that's really important to me is making informed decisions. So even if I'm you know, staunchly behind it, and even if all nine of our athletics directors are behind it, it's really important to take the opposing view just to make sure that we're covering all of our bases. So um, there are different strategies for doing that. A lot of times it's just a one-off call with different ADs that maybe don't speak up as much or different constituents that don't speak up as much or I know are probably thinking about something a little different or have an experience uh, in their background that might offer a unique perspective because they were a former coach or former student athlete. So it's taking the time to reach out to those folks and making yeah. sure however it gets inserted into the conversation, making sure that, it's, that it happens so that we can make an informed decision as a league and not hopefully you know, miss anything that might have been obvious to us. Yeah, as you were talking about that, uh, I'll ask you this, Gloria. You have so many different constituencies as a, as a commissioner, right? You have presidents, of course, CEOs. You have ADs. You have faculty athletic reps. You have SWA groups. You have student athletes, of course. And then yeah. you have your own uh, employees and your own staff, as well as as many others. So, do you do you adjust your leadership style and how how you manage maybe internally versus with all your different campus constituents? Yeah, absolutely, and per issue, right? Because as Amy referenced, that there's a lot of disparity in the league. Sometimes you're at the top of the league with regard to a certain issue, and sometimes you're not, depending what the issue of the day is. And I think it really takes. Um, as the commissioner, an ear to the ground and constant communication. I would echo what Amy said about um, some people don't talk a lot. You have to take extra efforts to reach out to them. Some people might be coming in hot because the, an issue is really close to their heart and you have to be prepared for that. And there's a lot of conversation that happens before the issue even gets into the room. Yeah. Um, I also think physically being out on your campuses, especially in my role, being so new, just getting out there, giving people time to get around to telling you what is really the issue and what is close to their heart. A lot of times, you know, that doesn't really happen on a phone call. Yeah. Um, it's that water cooler effect. And, you know, you can really get a sense of what the issues are and what the campus temperature is on an issue, top to bottom, when you're physically on the campus. So I found that really helpful in adjusting style. And sometimes it, it takes a long-lasting relationship before they'll tell you the truth as well, right? Yeah. So all those different personalities, Amy, how do, you, how do you build those relationships? Is it just time or is it, yeah. do you handle it different? It's, it is time. It's, it's getting the face time like Gloria just mentioned. It's, you know, being in a conference office with the people we see every day are our staff. But the people that we're most responsible to and who have the authority to hire or fire us are scattered across you know, however many states. Yeah. And especially in her case, where she's got to fly to more schools than I have to. So you do have to take the time to build those relationships to make sure that you can you know, effectively lead and manage your conference. So it's, it's doing the campus rounds. Yeah, as soon as I started, when I first got the position, I did that and made the rounds. Yeah. But it's remembering not to just stop doing that and put that on the shelf and check the box. It's doing that. Uh, periodically so that you can keep your ear to the ground like she said and, yeah. and build the relationships and then when you have new presidents, new ADs, you do, do that whole thing again and yeah. that's where it almost is even more important when they change from when you started because it's educating a whole new face um, to their institution, to the league, um, just when you think you have some good momentum coming, all yeah. it can take is one person potentially to throw you off, throw you off track and so it is simple, it is very simple in terms of building and maintaining relationships, but it does take time and something I think can be easily overlooked yeah. um, just because you get in the rhythm of things. But How yeah, important is that one-on-one -on -one with the ADs and presidents versus in the group setting for, for both of you? Well, I, I would add on that, especially in our leagues, our athletic directors usually are probably first time in the chair athletic directors yeah, and haven't ever sat at a conference meeting yeah. or table, maybe they have as an alternate, but you know they're so focused on their local issues and getting up to speed that it really, when you have a new AD or president or FAR or SWA, to really reach out to them and help bring them to the table and not only understand the materials and the issues, but the dynamics and how important it is to work collectively mm -hmm. and to, um, we laughingly call it, you know, practice the golden rule because someday <laughs> somebody else is going to want something of you yeah. in that yeah. same room, so do unto others. Um, and I think that's an important aspect of conference life is to help people onboard into league mentality to some yeah. degree. I'm trying to look for a little inside information here. Do you have a, a number in your head of how many times you want to visit each campus throughout the year? I mean, do you want to be at a certain amount of ball games or events or plays or whatever it is to have that one-on-one -on -one time? 
I don't have a specific number. My first couple years are definitely different than they are now, and certainly um, the last two years since I've been in school, I mean, there was just an understanding of, yeah. among our presidents and athletic directors that I was not going to be on campus as much as I had in the previous years. But that's uh, out of necessity to a certain extent, but it's also something that I really missed. I mean, yeah. that made the in-person times that we had just two or three times a year, and my attendance at a couple of championships um, even more valuable. But I, I definitely I can just sense that that's something I personally miss in establishing yeah. those connections. And like she said, phone calls can they can help maintain, but they're not as valuable as the in-person. So um, you know, I try to visit with our presidents at least once a year in person. It's, it's difficult because yeah. their schedules are so crazy um, and managing nine, and you know, you have more than that. So, um, so there's not like a number per se, yeah. but you do try to make sure that everyone's getting some face time with the commissioner. Yeah. What, Gloria, as a new commissioner, what, what's your plan to get around? And, and you're all up and down the West Coast, so you, from north to south, you, you yeah. hit everybody. How are you going to get out and see everybody? You know, I'm A, a little bit of a, you know, travel warrior, and B, a yeah. little bit of a gym rat. <laughs> C, I, you know, I have worked on campus before, and it's always a pull. Like, I love being in the gym. I love going to practice. I love getting that touch with student-athletes, and I am really fortunate in that, my travel footprint does not suck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you got some nice places. <laughs> LA, San Diego, Portland, uh, even Spokane is a beautiful, a little bit tougher to get to, but beautiful. Um, yeah. yeah. Can you tell us what's been the biggest surprise so far? Has there been anything that's, that's been surprising to you as a new commissioner? You know, I, I really think, it, I laughingly tell people that it's a different league, but it's the same issues. We need more revenue, we want more yeah. exposure, and we want to win more games. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so in that sense, there's a sense of comfort because the issues are the same, but every day is different. Yeah. Every day you're dealing with different challenges and you never know when one of your marquee members is going to be courted away or you know, yeah. flirted with another conference or whatever the issue yeah. is. How about for you, Amy? Is there You've been a commissioner a number of years now. Is there anything that you look back and say, wow, I didn't expect, expect this in my role? Um, I, I never have a good answer to that question, unfortunately, <laughs> Daniel. I, I think my years of working in a number of different conference offices and yeah. then being at the NCAA National Office where you certainly Everything's see lots of things happen yeah. um, and just how I sort of look at life and approach things, I, I try not to be surprised or even with something that hasn't popped up. Um, you sort of take it in stride and, and figure out a way to deal with it, even if it's not something I've faced before. Yeah. So th there's things that I maybe wouldn't have predicted, but nothing's been a true surprise because yeah. I think you have to be prepared for everything. And so if you are, then, you know, at least in theory, nothing should be a shock. Yeah. I, I will add that just being a new commissioner, there's only 32, 32? Division I uh, commissioners, and there is a very strong group of women in that room, and it was so comforting um, about how many, all of them reached out to me, all of them have been willing to answer questions and provide support, and it's really been really welcoming, and it's an, been a nice, yeah. um, I, I would say, just resource for someone yeah. starting off so new and being able to say, That's what good. do you do at your league meetings? And Yeah, it's definitely, an Apple a, pen. definitely an isolating <laughs> job as a commissioner because you can only share, discuss with your staff so many things, same thing with your membership. Um, so you need some people to bounce ideas and there's only, yeah, 32 of us. So yeah. there's not that many that have probably faced some of the same issues or had to look at things in the same way. And so that's, there's a really good network among, yeah. among all 32, but then, yeah, among the women, we certainly have developed a good rapport with each other. One, one thing I was thinking about while you, you were answering this question is you have all those constituents and you have to bring people together, right? And now there's so much coming down from the NCA and national issues and trying to get 10 different or 12 different institutions uh, on the same wavelength. So what's the best strategy for somebody that's looking to move into the role to bringing people together at the table? I mean, it, to me, it's, it's, it always goes back to the relationships. If, yeah. you can, if you can build that and establish trust with your league members who, who are all at the same time trying to be competitors, and our job is for at least a few moments in time to get them to be on the same team, that, that requires a lot of relationship building and a lot of trust that they would maybe make a decision or take a position that might be more immediately and counter to their best interest, but in the, in the interest of the majority or the interest of the conference is the right thing to do. That requires a lot of trust and confidence in 
conference leadership and, and each other, people sitting across the table and other athletic directors. So that to me is, is the most important thing, regardless of what the issue is, whether it's the micro, like what's happening with the softball or baseball championship to how we're gonna react to some big national change in legislation. Yeah. Um, so if you don't have that, and I've seen examples and you know been around enough to see where the, when that doesn't happen, even the most obvious of decisions can be seem like you're trying to you know climb Mount Everest. Whereas yeah. you had it, conversely, you can take some really challenging, complex issues and get through them and navigate them with sort of relative ease compared to the difficulty that they that they pose. Yeah. Trust and I, I, in law, they call it mediation, and I feel yeah. like we're the ultimate mediators, you know. Yeah. And you gotta, you gotta figure out what the issue is before people are coming into the room. You have to figure out what emotions and positions they're bringing into the room. And I think you mentioned helping to articulate both sides for both sides so that they get a fair say in the game. And reasonable minds are going to differ, and you're never going to have an issue. Well, rarely are you going to have yeah. issues that where everybody agrees and you know, you've got a 10-0 vote, but I think if you um, allow people to have their say and you're making decisions in a fair, transparent, um, for the best of the league, for the best of the membership manner, um, I think you garner the respect that, although this one might not have gone my way today, I know I'll get a fair shake on the next one and it wasn't personal and, you know, we did it, we did, the decision-making process was done um, very transparently. Perfect. I think that's a great place to end. Gloria, Amy, thank you so much for your time today. I think that was, uh, that was really good. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Honor to be with you.